So now that Booleans are all the rage in Modo land again, um, I wanted to do a quick video to talk about um, how to think about Booleans. There's a couple things that may not be so obvious. And uh, once you start to think about things like uh, using other tools to help out your Boolean workflow and thinking about like how the Mop Boolean toolkit is actually structuring things can help you work more efficiently. So uh, let's just uh, burn through a couple of tips here. So the first thing, is probably obvious to a lot of Moto users, but your Boolean operands are nothing special in terms of being mesh items. They're just mesh items. So that means you can use uh, all of the standard tools you use to duplicate or instance things or whatever you want to do. So if I select this subtracted chunk and use my clone tool, I can just make clones down the length of uh, this block, or I could instance them or, or use a radial array or extrude them along a path or whatever I want to do. That stuff all works. And uh, once you get that set in your head, it just becomes a lot more fluid of a workflow. So to build on that concept of they're just mesh items, uh, sometimes when you're editing live Booleans, you know, it can be slow. You know, let's be realistic, right? Like if you have a lot of complex stuff intersecting some sub D things mixed in, you know, it can get a little slow and janky. So one quick workaround for that is if you select the polygons you want to work with and throw them into um, you know, a new mesh item or a new file or whatever, make your modifications on the separate mesh item, cut that out, go back into the Boolean, take out the old polygons, Hold on. take out the old polygons and put the new polygons in. That could be a quicker workflow depending on what your particular mesh op stack looks like. So one last example of, of trying to think of everything as a whole, right? I saw this in Torfrix video, and I think I've seen some, some GIFs of it as well on Facebook, but um, one quick way to get those panel lines um, that run through objects is to use the pen tool. Now using the pen tool in wall mode uh, gives you a nice, nice parade of control points and edges. Let's say we want something like this, right? That runs through this cylinder. So we draw that out with the pen tool, uh, grab the thicken tool, uh, give it some body, pull it over so it's intersecting through the cylinder completely. And, and then if I just throw a subtraction operation at that, you can see we have a nice panel line cut through the whole thing. And when you render it out, of course, uh, the rounded edge shader takes care of all of the uh, the unsmooth areas. Now it looks a little janky here, but you know, honestly, it's because uh, we didn't even sub D the uh, uh, the panel line. So if I sub D them and now go back into the render, you can see this looks a lot better. It's perfectly smooth. Now that can get expensive, sure, but it is a really fast way to cut. You cut through and make separation lines uh, without having to paint them on in Painter or whatever. It was just not really a, a problem, but uh, this is an alternate idea. How about that? And one last quick example. I saw this in a ZBrush video and thought I would show it to you here. So when you think about subtractions on these Boolean meshes, you're really dealing with the negative space, right? Uh, what you want to take away. So say in this example case here, what I wanted to do was dig out a countersunk hole in the sphere and place the bolt inside of it. That's traditionally the way you would think about it, but there's a way that's a little more clever and kind of more fun. So to get this to work, uh, we have to modify this bolt mesh a little bit. So let me just do some quick modeling here. We will make a slight skirt around the bottom and edge weight it so it's hard. I'm gonna do a an edge extrude upwards, stop there, do another edge extrude upwards, a little taller, then scale that out so it's got the countersunk flare to it, then cap that polygon. And in fact, I might take this edge and give it a bevel as well, just so it's hardened up the way I want it to be hardened up. All right, looks good. Okay. Now I'm going to take that mesh and flip the polygons so it's the inversion of itself. See where I'm going here? Now if I grab that 
and sink it into the mesh just below the skirt level. Yeah, right there's good. And subtract it. Uh, there's our countersunk hole with a bolt down, down inside of it. Like we showed earlier, if you wanted to duplicate this around, just use the standard duplicate tools. So let's say I, I grab this, that mesh there, make a radial array. Now if I add, say, seven, seven copies of this, now we have uh, inset bolts running all around this uh, mesh and it's all, you know, yeah, as you already know, it's all live booleans. And this is what I was talking about earlier, with it getting a little janky. Yeah, it's getting a little heavy now. But that gives you a little bit of a window uh, into some of the possibilities and ways to think about booleans that make them the most useful. So I know I said in the last video we were going to build a prop start to finish in the next video, and this is the next video, but, you know, that's coming. But I wanted to talk about this first because it's important to get your head right about these things and start to think of them in creative ways and ways you can use other tools in Modo in conjunction with it to get the maximum benefit. So anyway, till next time.